Hello and good morning. Today our topic will be cerebral blood flow, free metabolism and cerebral spinal fluid. As you can see, it's just the blood supply for the brain. Uh, this is the right cerebral artery. This is the anterior communicating artery. This is the left middle cerebral artery. This is the right internal carotid artery. And this is the right posterior communicating artery. And this is the arterial circle. And this is the right posterior cerebral artery. And this is the basilar. As you can see, this all is making a circle. It is called the circle of Willi. And these are all interconnected to each other. And the main arteries are posterior inferior cerebral artery and the vertebral artery and they are then making this trunk cerebral blood flow the blood flow is operated by the four large arteries which are two internal carotid and two vertebral arteries and these are the two internal carotid and two vertebral this is the vertebral and they merge to form the circle of villus at the base of the brain. The arteries arising from the circle of villus travel along the brain surface and then give rise to pile arteries. And then they give smaller vessels called penetrating arteries and arterioles. <coughs> Sorry for that. Then there are the penetrating vessels which are separated from the brain tissue by the extension of the subarachnoid space called the virco robin space and then they give rise to the capillaries and it is formed uh, the blood brain barrier bbb is formed by the endothelial cells of the capillaries which supply the brain tissue and the spaces acts of lymphatics these are the several blood vessels as you can see uh, this is a pile artery and it is giving a penetrating artery reole and then there is the capillary outside it is are the anterior cells and then there is the parasite surrounding the capillary and then there is a cap junction from which uh, diffusion of material takes place and as you can see it is also covered by an astrocyte and there are also foot processes of the astrocytes and this is the virco robin space between the foot processes of the astrocyte and the artery itself and this is the pi matter Okay, so the brain capillaries are less leaky as compared to the capillaries outside the body, uh, sorry, elsewhere in the body. And they are also supported by the glands feet of the astrocytes and prevention of the outstretching of the capillaries in case of high blood pressure. Uh, the gland cells are supporting, the gland feet of the astrocytes are supporting and they are preventing the overstretching of capillaries because uh, the brain needs a lot of blood to operate uh, so they, they are not leaky the capillaries are not leaky normal blood flow through the brain average of 50 to 65 milliliter or 100 grams of brain tissue per minute or 750 to 900 milliliter per minute for the entire brain this is the, for the brain tissue this is for the entire brain or we can uh, calculate in a total resting cardiac output which is 15 percent the 15 percent of the resting cardiac output goes to the brain when the person is in the state of rest then there is the regulation of cerebral blood flow the role of metabolic factors cerebral blood flow is related to metabolism of the tissue and then there are the metabolic factors which are the carbon dioxide concentration and then the hydrogen ion concentration and then there is the oxygen concentration and 
the substances which are released from the astrocytes are nitric oxide, metabolites of the arachidonic acid, potassium ions, and adenosine. So, we will study the effect of carbon dioxide concentration on the cerebral blood flow. As you can see, this is the arterials, uh, arterial uh, partial pressure of the carbon dioxide. Then there is the cerebral blood flow. Okay. As you can see, when it is uh, when it reaches 20, this cerebral blood flow is, as you can see, 4, 5, 6, 0 0.6. And when it, this is the normal value, the CO, arterial CO2 is 40, and when, then, when the, when the arterial CO2 increases, the cerebral blood flow also increases, and when it reaches 80, the cerebral blood flow is also increasing as well. So it means when there is more carbon dioxide being generated in the uh, in the brain, then there is the cerebral blood flow to the brain is increasing. Okay. Uh, the role of skill to in hydrogen ion concentration uh, when there is increase. Uh, there is basically is the same thing which I explained before. Increasing the CO2 in the arterial blood increases the cerebral blood flow. Okay. CO2 plus water makes this H2CO2 and then it disassociates into H and SCO3 and then the, this hydrogen ion causes vasodilation the cerebral blood vessels and when there is oxygen deficiency, oxygen deficiency causes vasodilation in the cerebral blood vessels. Okay. There are other substances that increase the acidity of the brain tissue, include lactic acid, pyruvic acid, and other acidic material formed during tissue metabolism. Increased hydrogen ion concentration and increase in cerebral blood flow. Okay, importance is increased hydrogen ion causes acidosis and it represses neuronal activity. So, hydrogen ion concentration is to be maintained at normal level. Role of autoregulation. During normal daily activities, material pressure fluctuates, rising to high levels during states of excitement and stress activity, falling to low levels during sleep. However, cerebral blood flow is auto-regulated between arterial pressure limits of 60 to 140 mmHg in normal persons. In hypertensive cases, when there is high blood pressure, upper limit is increased to 180 to 180 mmHg per Hd. When arterial blood pressure, when the arterial blood pressure decreases below 60 mm of Hd, the cerebral blood flow becomes severely decreased. It is decreased because when there is less blood uh, pressure, okay, for example, 60 millimeter of HD, the heart is having a hard time pumping into the brain. So, therefore, the cerebral blood flow becomes severely decreased because the brain is up at top, the heart is in the middle. Got Then there is the role of sympathetic nervous system. The cerebral circulatory system has strong sympathetic innervation and uh, when there is transaction of sympathetic nerves, there is uh, the, uh, there it, it causes uh, much change, does not cause much change in the cerebral blood flow and auto uh, regulatory system overrides the nervous effects. And uh, this is important for controlling the cerebral blood flow when there is acute sudden and high BP in response to very strenuous activity. And it is important for preventing occurrence of strokes. And uh, substances releases, released from astrocytes as a result of metabolic processes also lead towards uh, the vasodilation. And these substances are nitric oxide metabolites of arachidonic acid, potassium ions, and adenosine. And uh, uh, then there is the cerebral blood flow, cerebral stroke, 
and it is occurs when the cerebral blood vessels are blocked or ruptured and almost in all elderly people there have a blockage of small arteries in the brain and it is caused due to the arteriosclerotic plaques uh, they go and set there the large deposits sit there in the arteries of the uh, heart maybe sometimes or it can also occur in brain and they can uh, form anywhere and then uh, in uh, it can also occur in the brain as i've told before and uh, when they can uh, the plagues are stationary and uh, they can also move towards the heart of the brain and plagues activate blood clotting mechanism and blood clots are formed and blockage of blood flow in the arteries occurs and uh, uh, brain function uh, is lost in the localized area where the plague is formed because it obstructs the blood flow in the brain and it sometimes occurs due to high blood pressure and uh, causes the rupture of blood vessels in the brain and which causes hemorrhage and the accumulation of blood compresses the underlying brain tissue and the middle several artery on the left side results in the loss of function of vernix area which is uh, the loss of comprehension the broca's area the person cannot speak and the neuromotor control areas which causes spastic paralysis on the opposite side contralateral side and the brain metabolism 15% of the total body metabolism takes place in the brain. The blood flow is also 15% as uh, we have learned before and most of the metabolism takes place in the neuronal cells and not in the glial cells and energy is needed for the brain for functioning ions, the sodium, potassium and calcium and during high levels of brain activity, brain metabolism can increase as much as 200 or 150. The special requirements for the brain of, uh, for excision are the brain is not capable of anaerobic metabolism, the muscles are capable of anaerobic metabolism, meaning uh, they can operate without oxygen and it, they produce 2, HTT, uh, sorry, two ATP uh, for uh, the in, in Krebs cycle and uh, the reason for high metabolic rate of neurons are uh, the reason for uh, the reason is the high metabolic rate of neurons because uh, the neurons are working very hard and they need more oxygen to operate and uh, energy is supplied by glucose to the brain and uh, the glucose uptake is not insulin dependent in the rest of the body it is insulin dependent in insulin dependent diabetes if the patient is over treated with insulin then glucose rapidly enters thorn neuronal cells throughout the body and not enough glucose is left in the blood to be used by the neural cells the insulin basically helps uh, the helps the cells to take in the glucose okay and when there is more a lot of insulin a lot of glucose enters the blood uh, sorry enters the cells and uh, um, it can also cause derangement of mental functions and coma. We will cover the cerebral spinal fluid in the next video because uh, it, I have to make it concise. Thank you very much for listening. Please like, share and subscribe.